Hi there and welcome to Mr. Ed Codes and in this episode I wanted to explore the text to points keyword in P5JS. So here's an example of what you can do with it. Now there are all kinds of things that you can do. One of the things that I wanted to do was have any word put it into the program and it would blow that word up into its lines. So to do that you need to know <laughs> what's the points that make up a character. Well, true type fonts and open type fonts are made up of vectors so they, they're scalable and when you scale them up they don't lose their fidelity. They still look, they don't look pixelated or boxy or anything like that. So you can take those two tr true type fonts, plug them into this keyword called text to points and it will return an array that's uh, the X and Y position of all of those points in the character or string of characters and those points will be relative to an origin that you assign it and uh, they can be uh, so large so your text size you can put that in there too so once you have that array you can do all kinds of stuff with it so in this example I use the array to assign the starting vectors of another array of points that actually move up the screen and generate the bubble. So let's go to the P5JS website and look at what it has in this, as an example. And it's, to be honest, it's for simplicity's sake so you can understand what's going on. It's a pretty simple example. It's not probably not the best. It's actually got a few problems with it and that helps identify the limitations of what you can do with this uh, text to points keyword. So in a string of characters, if you're drawing lines to recreate that array, then it, it'll attach from one character to the next. You have to differentiate between characters somehow. So that can be problematic. But if you're just going to go from the points that are there and uh, make bubbles or whatever, that's fine. You don't have to worry about a line carrying over from like the P to the five. So if you're drawing lines from point to point, you're going to jump from the P to the 5. Well, if you've done a string of characters, the text to points doesn't know that a P is not a 5, is not a period, is not a J, is not an S. To it, it's all one thing. So you have to differentiate. I don't do that here. I'm just working with the points. But in the future, I'm going to attach the points with lines and then have those lines fly apart. And there are ways that you can optimize that process just by adjusting how the the parameters of the keyword. So there's this thing in uh, the keyword that's called the sampling rate. I have fidelity in my program that represents this value. What it's doing is it goes through the the characters one time. So it plots a point, it moves so far it plots another point, it moves so far it plots another point and then it keeps track of that in array and its movements are uh, dictated by the true type font data set or the open type font data set. So it's looking at the the vectors there, it's pulling the points out and it's leaving so much space in between. That space in between is like your text size. That magnitude never changes even though you increase the f fidelity the magnitude is always going to be the same. What you do is you sample it again but you go between points so wherever you had points before you find the mid distance between those points and that's where you start your sample and then you go the next magnitude is going to put you in between the next set of points and then the next one is going to be in between the next set of points and so on and so forth so that you're doubling the density of points that it returns in this array that's the fidelity of course it increases the number of uh, elements in that array and then that's going to eat up your processing speed so one is a good fidelity it's a fair sample rate for whatever font you're using and that's another thing here i uploaded fonts into the, my sketch assets part and then i can use those fonts just by setting them in the preload so i have an asteroids which is like a straight line font it's all caps and then i have uh, times new roman which is lower and uppercase got all of your characters and there's some serifs and stuff that are kind of neat on it so uh, the ability to change your fonts and uh, have different characters associated with your array that's really <laughs> that's really handy 
to do with just this text to points thing. So my program here is fairly simple. Um, it's basically just printing the points array at a certain location down at the bottom of the screen and then it's creating another array that it's associating with those locations and then it's going to apply a force to those that, to that second array that generates the bubbles rising up. As the bubbles get higher or closer to the top of the screen they get larger at the same time that radius is reflected at the at the on the first array so if you look at the the dots the bubbles that are in the characters themselves those are getting bigger over time and that size is relational to the distance of its associated bubble rising to the top so by the time the associated bubble gets to the very top its position where it started at in the characters its bubble is getting big enough to want to break off so it creates that illusion that the bubble that the the text is pushing this air out slowly and that the air finally gets buoyant enough to break free and rise up and it just happens to coincide with the bubble leaving the screen at the top does that make any sense so there's kind of clever ways you can create these illusions and I have uh, several bubbles that are being printed. I have the two arrays and then the the bubbles that are actually moving have another bubble that's on top of them that's offset just a little bit below so it gives this appearance that the top of the bubble is highlighted while the bottom is shadowed so it really makes it look bubble-like. So you can do these things that uh, create the illusion that you're really you're really trying to pump up this at least I am. I'm trying to make this tweak it in whatever ways I can to really give it that cool effect. Now it eats up a lot of processing speed when I increase the density so I'm lowering the fidelity here I'm changing the words and I'm having a problem I'm gonna try and solve this today actually uh, it's not such a big deal just describing text to points to you but uh, to get the width of that you have to use a different there's like a keyword that you use and you can get a bounding box for that for the array whatever size you need if you try to use text size and figure out the width of the word that way and associate it's just not going to they they do not match up <laughs> so text size or text width use the word is going to return a different value than uh, bounding that array in the example it shows you it creates a, a bounds for it and there's a, a formula that it that it will fit that inside of a box so if, if use that formula I want to get it to where no matter what text I use no matter what size it is it's always going to be centered in the screen and the boundaries of that is always going to be relational the way that it is now if my text is too large it's going to be off of the edge check so I have a, a, a part in there that checks if a bubble's gone off the edge well they're gonna start out off the edge <laughs> because it's just nothing is relational so it messes with the program that way I've got to fix that but it wasn't so important that I couldn't show you this now and demonstrate a lot of the cool stuff that you can do with the text to points it's, it really is awesome so there's another thing in here called simplify threshold and when you adjust this value what it does is it looks at any co collinear points so if you have a line going from point A to point B and you have several points on that line you can simplify that the number of points just by removing any points that are between so you're you're basically wherever there is a line you're gonna have a starting point to that line and ending point to that line and then if there's a change in the angle of to the next point well then that's going to that's going to define another line and it'll get rid of any points in between till you get to the next change in angle of that point to draw the next to go to the next point does that make sense I think I kind of show it here um, where I remove those collinear points and it looks it looks really weird and chunky what you can do if you take out those extra points is you can start to define the different sections of the characters so maybe on the P you can see the left hand side there's kind of a long line that goes from a bottom serif to a top serif 
well you'd have that long line would be its own thing because you could put those two points in an array and then it, it's a line and then you can have the serif it's its own thing at the end you can blow this these characters up and their parts actually fly away so the curve on the p would fly away the top of the five would fly away it wouldn't just be random shaped things moving away real fast it'd actually be the parts of the characters flying away so that's kind of a really advanced idea of how you can use text to points and my next goal goal for myself because i've been teaching myself p5js watching uh, different people show me things and I try that play around with them learn stuff and just move on to the next thing I set next go new goals for myself so my new goal is to take apart the text remove the collinear parts create the lines that generate the text and then have those pieces fly apart it sounds really complicated so if you want to see that in the future hit the bell uh, hit subscribe be notified all of that business or just check back or you know whatever I it is what it is I get like nine views on my videos so it doesn't really matter uh, but I say it anyway just in case anyway let's get back to this program here so the the particle generator that was a function that I had created already for another program that I had created and I just ported it over cut out the pieces I didn't need plugged in the stuff that I did and what crossed over I didn't have to redo again which was maybe 60% of it so 40% of this function that I created I had to remove and uh, the rest of it stayed in the main body of the program I had a, a you can see the commented out section there that's the explosion it, it, I, it didn't have bubbles to begin with the text would just fly apart its points would go in every direction and then reset back to itself and explode again uh, I took that part out just commented it out and then made it bubbles so there's a lot of code in this program if you're going to copy this text from uh, copy the program from the video which you're more than welcome to do if you want to program this in uh, there's stuff in there that's not being used I've got a spin variable I've got a rotate commented out that's in case you instead of want to draw bubbles you want to draw little lines that represent each point and then those lines can spin that's a pretty cool thing I got the text to jitter around like an earthquake so you can do all kinds of really cool effects that way it's just endless I'm gonna have so much fun playing with this text to points keyword uh, I wished I hadn't shied away from it for so long but it's important before you jump into this keyword that you understand arrays that you really understand functions well and um, you kind of have a little bit of understanding about uh, a location of vectors so in the the text to points keyword it has an X and a Y start value that's your origin and then every point in your characters or your string of characters is going to be tied to that origin so characters at the very far right if you set your origin to zero zero any characters to the right of that their X value is going to increase as they go further right does that make sense so you can set that that value um, to anything you want but the array is always going to be increasing relative to it so you can't set it to like positive numbers and expect the array to be centered around that origin the origin is going to be like the I think in this case it's like the lower left corner is where the array starts as best as I can tell I've been trying to test it out and probably need to look at that closer but uh, understand that your starting value for your text to points parameters that's going to set your origin for the values of every other point and if you rotate around that it's yeah it's going to it's going to rotate the text around that lower left hand corner so I think it is the lower left hand corner is the origin to the locations in the points array that you get out of the text to points and you can have that set to any value it doesn't have to be points you could set it to anything you want it just happens to be a standard for this so I think that's pretty much all for this video here I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit about uh, text to points and
how powerful of a tool it is. Don't be afraid. Copy this program if you want and play around with it. The fonts you can download for free. They're available for free. Just download them and then just upload a copy to uh, the asset side there of the sketch page. And if you have any trouble with that, Daniel Schiffman will show you how to do that on the coding train. Also wanted to tell you that that's a reference. All the stuff that I do, there are um, detailed references to almost everything that I've done on the coding train. Daniel Schiffman goes from A to B. I've thought about doing this for people, but he's already done it. Um, I think if I was going to do it, I would I would help people who know basic and QBasic from like the 80s and 90s. Those people, my peers, who are trying to go from that language to uh, JavaScripting to modular programming to object-oriented programming can be really tricky. So. Uh, he may not be the best for that because <laughs> he doesn't really explain from pseudocode or basic to what you're doing but he does break it down enough to where if you just let go you can figure you can figure it out you can do it so at the end here is an uh, example of the original explosion function that i created and i just changed it to bubbles and i'll do this one in the future so stay tuned for that and i guess that's it for this one Thanks for watching. If you have till the end, hit like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and as always, until next time, take care.